do this too unto the Lord. Do it as a means of honoring Him and His gift to you. Let that be your motivation. Hello. Well, the other day I was talking with T for Theology, and he suggested this topic, you know, art, creativity, and Christian faith. Now, I must confess that I find this to be a rather daunting t- subject, to be truthful. I mean, it's very large, Encomp- and it, it encompasses so very much ground. Indeed, it is one that is too large for any one chat, so this is going to be one of an ongoing series within the broader Coffee Side chat series. Now, it may not be one after the other, but we're going to keep coming back to this, because, like I said, it's going to cover... I'll take a lot of time to cover everything. So, where to begin? Well, where we always begin. A beautiful cup of coffee. Huh. Mm. All right. So, I think, well, the first place to begin is to establish the basis for creativity. I mean, its origins, its motivations, as seen through the lens of what it means to be a Christian. And, you know, once that is sorted out, we will have a firm basis on which to base all future discussions about art, creativity, and the Christian faith. Without this basis, I mean, yes, it would be possible to talk about art and creativity. I mean, that would be kind of silly to think otherwise. But not how they are interrelated with God and our faith, you know, our relationship with Him. So, what is this basis for all human creativity? What is its origin? Well, if we go back to the very beginning, and I mean back to the very beginning, it is God Himself, for God created, right? He created the heavens, the earth, everything on the earth. He made it all. And yet, have you ever stopped and pondered on the creativity of God in doing so? Or, you know, that he truly seems to be enjoying being so creative. I mean, everything he created, right, he said was good. Now, this has led me to two separate and different thoughts. First, it is that we as human beings are indeed made in the image of God. Are we not? Now, yes, this involves a whole lot more than I can talk about here. But one thing it does involve is our ability to be creative. See, he has made us, among everything else he's made us to be, he has made us to be creative human beings. Well, even as God both enjoys uh, being creative and then he enjoys the beauty he creates, well, he has placed that same attribute in us so that we may be well-rounded reflections of himself, truly his image. Second important note, thought that I have about this is that creativity now is shown not to be inherently chaotic, shocking, or ugly. It is also not inherently free from any and every constraint, okay? For everything God has created is indeed part of an ordered and beautiful creation. Indeed, the initial making of something inherently chaotic and shocking or or ugly, well, that seems to be a direct contrast to the creativity found in God, to God's creativity. Now, You might be thinking, okay, okay, that sounds kind of interesting, but what on earth does that have to do with art today? Well, first, it helps us understand that our art isn't ours at all. Our creativity, no matter how much or how little we think we have, is, like life itself, a gift from God a gift that has been given to us to be good stewards of. And 
if we do entirely give our lives back to God, then we must also give our creativity back as well, in all of his expression, right? Isn't that an interesting thought? Oh. And do you want to hear something that's very interesting indeed? This is also embodied in the two greatest commands ever given. You know, to love God with our entire being and our neighbor as ourselves. How? Is that tied in to being creative, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. Since one of the things that makes up our entire being is our creativity, we must love God with this as well, with all of this as well. Now. What might that look like? Would you believe I found some Bible passages which give us a hint as to what this might look like? The first is in Ecclesiastes of all places, chapter 9, verse 10, which says, Whatever you find to do with your hands, do it with all your might. And in Colossians, um, chapter 3, 23, we are told, Whatever you do, whatever you do, Work at it with all your heart, working for the Lord, not for anybody else. For it is the Lord, Jesus, you know, the Christ, whom you are serving. Not yourself and not anyone else. Don't care who pays you. And anyone who does not do so will be repaid for all the wrongs they have done. There's going to be no favoritism in this. Yes, that is a slight paraphrase. And yes, you know, neither of these passages are specifically talking about being artistic or creative. Conceded. Yet, honestly, these passages and similar ones that I have found do not qualify what they are talking about when they say, whatever it is you do. It means whatever you do. So, you know, since being creative is indeed something you do, do it with all your heart, with all your integrity, all your honesty, wholeheartedly with all your might, produce the best possible creative expression you can do. For you are producing it through God's gift of creativity. Be a good steward of God's gift. Use it well. You know, and like I said, whether you are working on this as a commercial project, you know, when you're getting paid for, or for private purposes, you know, one for your own wall. Don't be selfish or self-serving in this expression. Do this too unto the Lord. Do it as a means of honoring Him and His gift to you. Let that be your motivation. Okay, well, getting a little long but I do want to mention how being creative and loving our neighbor as ourselves also mix together. See, I I think we can look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 12 as a good starting point, which says, In everything then that you do, do to others as you would have them do to you. For this is the essence of the law and the prophets. So, you know, only produce creatively what you want others to produce for you. And don't produce anything you wouldn't want someone else to produce for you. Let me state it this way. If you don't like seeing something that is halfway done or slovenly done, don't produce something halfway or slovenly. Be fully engaged creatively to produce the best creative expression that you can. That's a good starting point for it anyway. And before wrapping this up, I do want to take note of something quite important. When I talk about being fully engaged and doing the very best that you can, I do not mean being perfect or being an artistic genius, whatever those things mean. First off, no one can truly define what perfection even is. I mean, even dealing with just a few different people, I have always found 
that this is an ever-shifting goalpost. And, honestly, there have only ever been a handful of creative geniuses. I can count them on one hand, maybe two, in all of history. And if you are like me, you are not one of those people. But don't worry about it. Just do the best you can and continuously work on improving, on learning more, and honing your skill sets. Jesus doesn't ask us to be perfect in the creative process, only to be fully engaged with all our might, wholeheartedly. Which means, don't settle for half-hearted attempts. Don't be taking shortcuts or providing cliché answers in the production of your art. And this applies to all creative expression, you know, whether it's in the form of music, painting, photography, woodworking, poetry, spoken word applications, playwriting, screenwriting, any creative endeavor. Do it in good stewardship of the creative gift God has given to you, that he has entrusted to you. That is enough, and God will be pleased. Well, here ends the first video in this series on art and creativity and the Christian faith. Let me know what you think. And if you have a suggestion that will fit nicely into this series, let me know what it is, and we'll talk about it. Well, until next time then, until next time then, take it easy, take it slow, and make coffee into your cup always flow.